Open your Bibles to Ezekiel 38. The last time I preached on this subject, I, start, I started tying it into Revelation chapter 16, where we find the Armageddon War mentioned in the New Testament. And I told you the Gog Magog War and Armageddon are one of the same. I know what eschatology teachers have to say on the matter, but they've been wrong just about in everything else. So what makes you think they're right on this particular topic? Now we covered what Armageddon means in the New Testament. If you go to the board real quick, Armageddon or Armageddon. Again, being a place of troops or assembly of troops or a gathering of troops and or a mountain assembly of troops or a mountain rendezvous of troops or a mountain gathering of troops. Now, I haven't said where this mountain is located yet, and I'll get to that. That's not tonight's subject matter. I keep getting people asking on different topics in the book of Revelation. If I'm ever going to get to the 144,000, for instance, the scarlet beast, and so forth. As far as the 144,000, God willing, is just around the corner. But tonight, I still want to stay on this subject matter regarding the Gog, Magog War and Armageddon. They're one of the same folks. Now, I know, like I said, what prophecy teachers, scholars, eschatologists believe in what they teach, that this takes place on Megiddo or Mountain Megiddo, which is nothing more than a tell, a small hill not that many gathering of troops could fit on this tell. And of course, they then extend it to the valley and, and so forth. That's not where it takes place, but that's the subject matter tonight. I know they think this battle happens too. When they fit it in, if the ones that do fit in with Ezekiel 38 and 39, they believe, for the most part, that this occurs before the tribulation period because they have this mindset that there's a seven-year tribulation, which I debunked, I think, already. If you listen to the Last Day series, if you missed it, there's plenty of information. You can read it or listen to it. Very few connect it with Ezekiel 38. There's a few the very few connected with Ezekiel 38, 39. That is Armageddon and Ezekiel 38, 39 with the Battle of Armageddon. But the ones that do, their error is they still put this at the so end, I mean, so called end of the tribulation period. And of course, as we already covered, they try to connect the dots their way, being creative. Not really getting it from the Bible, but just guessing who the players might be because whoever the superpower or strong country at the time could fit the bill in these last days for their interpretation of who's who and far as this invasion that we see here in Ezekiel 38, which consists of verse 2, verse 5, and verse 6. I'm not going to review any of that. If you missed it, you have to go back to the teaching. And of course, they believe it's a Russian-led invasion. 
I said, no, it isn't. So there we go, differing again. And um, they say it's going to happen at the beginning of the church tribulation for the most part. I said, no, there isn't. A tribulation period like they define it. And it doesn't happen at the beginning of any seven-year period, if, even if there was one. It's going to happen at the end. See, in this battle, this Gog and Magog war, this battle, Armageddon battle, is a different type of battle because in this battle, God's wrath, his steaming hot anger is aroused. And he pours out in this battle, which is different than Psalm 83, but he pours out his fiery wrath. You see in Ezekiel 38. Let's just go to it real quick. Verse, let's just read verse 17 through 19. Thus saith the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I spoken in old time by my servants? The prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them somewhere in the future. And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. God's fury is going to come up in his face, for in my jealousy... And the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shake in the land of Israel. See, God, in this final battle, when he pours out his wrath, it will be clear not to just this invading multinational force, but to the world, who annihilates who. You see the same thing in Revelation. Go to Revelation chapter 11. Get ready to use your Bible tonight and stay alert because I'm going to be going back and forth. Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. After the seventh angel sounded, after the seventh trumpet, in verse 15, let's just read, verse, start with verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that it should be judged, and thou shalt, and thou, that thou shouldest give reward to the servants, to the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, plus, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. He's blessing some and pouring out his wrath on others. Pouring his wrath out in others. And nations were angry, and thy wrath has come in the time of the dead. And, and should it destroy them will destroy the earth. So when this final battle happens, and I just gave you when the seventh trumpet blows, what happens? And I know there's six more trumpet sounds prior to seven, and you're probably sitting there saying, why does he get to those first six first? I'll get to it.
So when this war happens, which we find in Revelation chapter 16, which well, Revelations 15 and 16 are really tied in together, the seven plagues, which is the seven vials of wrath, we find in, this, in verse 17, the seventh angel poured in Revelation 16, out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice at the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And then there's great earthquake and so forth. Seventh trumpet and the seventh vial being poured are related to each other. Things that will happen simultaneously. You go to Zephaniah in the Old Testament. Might as well go there. Might as well cover that particular verse. That's in the Old Testament. That points to a future event that still hasn't happened yet. Zephaniah chapter 3. Hopefully you're taking notes. Where it mentions God's fierce anger once again. Verse 8. Therefore wait... Ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the, until the day that I will rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, just like it says in Ezekiel, by the way, and also in the book of Revelation, chapter 16, that I will gather up the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon thy, them my what? indignation even all my fierce anger that hasn't happened anywhere in history even though it was written thousands of years ago it still hasn't happened when the Lord gathers the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to the poor upon them my indignation even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire Of my jealousy. Of my jealousy. Get my Bible back to Revelation. Now, God's fierce anger, God's wrath, both New and Old Testament, and how He pours it out. And who does He pour it out to? The nations that He gathers that we find that's involved in this Armageddon War, which is the Gog-Magog War in the Old Testament, Armageddon War in the New Testament. We know who they are because Ezekiel chapter 2, I mean chapter 38, verse 2, 5, and 6 lists the countries, the nations that are involved. And this is an end time event, not a pre-tribulation event. If you think about it, if God's destroying these armies, these, these invading multi multinational armies at the beginning of some tribulation period, let's just say the beginning of a seven-year tribulation, Christian science fiction theory period, then which armies at the end of seven years of the world have to gather to assemble and invade Israel at the so-called Armageddon War? And why can't we find that in scriptures? How many times I've said it so often, God's word verifies itself many times over. It doesn't make any sense is what I'm trying to tell you. But they haven't really made much sense. And think about it. God's fierce anger. God's wrath. He's personally going to be involved in dealing with this invasion. Unlike Psalm 83, I'm not saying he has a, his hand in control of history. But still earthly powers will be involved in that. 
God's coming down with the last war, and he's taking care of business. Now, who in their right mind, what nation in their right mind, and don't tell me the devil can influence all these nations to oversee what I'm about ready to ask you, which is, who in the right mind, after seeing God totally annihilate these invading armies, God's power, a supernatural type of power that this world's never seen, at least in our time, dealing with these invading armies at the so-called beginning of the tribulation, who in their right mind and what armies of what nations would even dare seven years later to try an invasion? Not to mention the individuals and nations of individuals that are part of the supporting force that invades that will fear and tremble so bad that will hide in dens and caves. Which I'll have something to say about that in the future, but not now. Think about it. I know as time passes, we tend to forget, but seven years ain't that long to have a supernatural experience of like man probably has never really seen. would even dare to try to come up against God again. If that doesn't make it clear that Ezekiel 38 and 39 describes the Battle of Armageddon, which is, take, is to take the place at the end of times, not a pre-tribulation, which most eschatologists preaches. I'm sorry. It doesn't make any sense. It never has. If you look close enough and you search the scriptures, at best it's creative thinking on their part, trying to put the rest of their fantasy story together. One big science fiction pile of you know what. Now, before I go any further, I said, and I repeat, Ezekiel 38 and Revelation 16 is the same, 39 and 38 is the same war. Same war. Now, if you go back to Ezekiel, Thirty-eight. We know who the nations are. When you read verse 2, verse 5, and verse 6. And then you jump over to verse 18 in Ezekiel 38. It reads, And it shall come to pass at the same time when God shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy... And in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking. Circle that. A great shaking. So that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven, the beasts of the field, and all the creeping things that creep upon the earth, and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall. And every one shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains. Say the Lord God, every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence. Circle that. You circled great shaking. Now circle pestilence. And with blood. Circle that blood. So you should have three, three things shaken so far. The great, I mean, it's not shaken. <laughs> three things circled. Great shaking, pestilence, and blood. 
and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon many people that are with him, overflowing rain and great hailstones. Circle those. They're actually one and the same, but an overflowing rain that flow, rains down great hailstorms, really. So circle those two, overflowing rain, great hailstones, but they're really one. Okay, so you should have one, two, three, four. And what's after that great hailstones? Fire. Circle that. And then, and brimstones. Finishes the verse. So circle brimstones. Brimstones. If you were to translate that, stones that burn, or burning stones. Different than the hail, my friend. Almost like what sulfur does in certain compounds of it and how the skin reacts to it. A burning, almost like peeling sensation. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am Lord. Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back, and I will leave the sixth part of thee. I will six thee. Six thee with what? Six thee with plagues. You'll find some translators that translate the, this as, I will strike thee with six plagues. And what are the six plagues? We don't have to go any further than what I just read to you. That's why I had you circle. Great shaking, number one. Two, pestilence. Three, blood. Four, overflowing rain, great hailstones. Five, fire. And brimstones or burnstones, six. Now, can we find in the New Testament six events such as these kind of plagues that closely resembles or is an exact match to what's listed here in Ezekiel 38? Absolutely. Now, I know what you're going to say in Revelation 16. There's seven plagues. That's right, there are seven plagues. Because there's one thing that's added here that's not in Ezekiel 38, but I'll get to that. Let's go to Ezekiel 16. Let's start with the very first verse. Prior to, before we get there, prior in verse, in, in chapter 15, verse 7, it says, And then one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials, full of the wrath of God. There is that fierce anger and wrath of God again, who live it forever and ever. And then in verse 16, it starts listing these plagues, these seven vials of wrath. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out of the vials the wrath of God upon the earth. This is it. One of the final events. That's to happen. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore. Circle that. Noisome and grievous sore. That's number one. Upon the men which had the mark of the beast. And those of you who have listened to this teaching, if not, there's a whole volume on the mark of the beast in the written format, and there's many messages in the video format also in the teaching center. So these type of stories upon them which had the mark of the beast, which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worship his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and became as the blood of the dead. Circle blood there. And every living soul died in the sea. What sea? This is not all the oceans around the world, by the way. And I'll get to that. Not tonight, but, not, but I'll get to that. And a sec second angel poured out his vials upon the sea and became as the blood. Circle that. That's the second thing you circled there. 
of the dead man and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters that became blood. So we're still dealing with the blood plague here. It's not another additional one. It's still a blood plague. So even though you're circling that again, it's still part of the second plague. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which are, art and, va and wast, and hast shall be, because thou hast just thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. So we still only deal with two plagues so far. Let's continue. And I heard another out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch man with fire. Circle that, fire. Man will be scorched with fire. Now, I'm not going to get to the details. I have my opinions of what some of these things could be actually look like in our day and age but it's just opinions and at this point I don't think it's worth giving my opinion if these are supernatural acts it could be a combination of certain all kinds of different things but some of these eschatologists and prophecy teachers are saying well this is going to be an ICBM or this is going to be this or that I don't go that far I don't know what God's going to use. I have my opinions on it. And right now, I'm not ready to give my opinions yet. We're just covering what's going to happen in a general sense. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given to him to scorch man with fire. Circle that. That's number three. And the men were scorched with great heat, which was part of that fire. And blasphemy the name of God, which had the power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Amazing. And you wonder why they're going to wind up in a lake of fire? Almost up to this point, it's like God saying, they had a chance to have a change of mind, but they still won't. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. That's number four, by the way, of the plagues. And they still will not have a change of mind. Now I'm going to skip down. I'll come back. I'm going to skip down to verse 18, 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake. Write that down as number five. Such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great. And the great city was divided into, many, into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell in great Babylon, came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath, which God will not get to that also. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon a man, uh, a, man a great hail. Write that down. Circle that. Great hail, number six. Of heaven, every stone about the weight of talent, and man blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Here's the New Testament 60, but there's something added in the New Testament we don't have, find 
in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And that, we go back to verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, the way the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of the devils, working miracle, which go forth in the kings of the earth of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together in a place called the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. So, drying up the rivers, or pouring out his vial upon the great rivers of Euphrates, and water was dried up to make way of the kings of the east might be repaired, would be the seventh plague. And believe me, when you're dealing with blood with all the other waters that we find earlier mentioned, drying up the Euphrates and the water thereof, which means it might even affect the river Tigris, will be detrimental to the areas that depend upon these waters. And that would be the seventh, which is not mentioned in Ezekiel 38. The only thing that's different in Ezekiel 38 and 39 is found here in verse 12 in Revelation chapter 16. Because there's an additional thing that happens. And because there's an additional thing that happens, a lot of these eschatologists say, well, if they don't match up perfectly, so it can't be that. Then what else is going to be? Show me where in Scripture, where else is so close and some things are exact that we find in Ezekiel 38 and 39 when we look at Ezekiel, I mean, Revelation chapter 16. I mean, Ezekiel 38, verse 19, there's a great shaking. Revelation 16, verse 18, a great earthquake. Pestilence. In verse 22 in Ezekiel 38, Revelation chapter 16, verse 2, noisome and grief is sores. Blood. You find in Ezekiel 38, verse 22. Revelation 16, verse 3, blood upon the sea, and it became as the blood of the dead and and every living soul died in the sea. And then verse 4, more blood poured out upon the rivers and fountains of the water. Great hailstones. That you find in verse 22 in Ezekiel 38 and in Revelation chapter 16, verse 21. Great hell out of, out of heaven. I mean. Fire. Ezekiel 38, verse 22. Revelation 16. Someone was given power to scorch men with fire. Revelation 16. Verse 8. How much more evidence do you need? How stubborn you have to be to not connect the dots. I know it does not fit into the Christian science fiction theory completely. According to their creative thinking, which is fiction. But let's stay with the truth. Let's stay with the verifiable words of God. These things are closely matched. And you can't find it this close anywhere else. 
Ezekiel looking to the future. So we find in Revelation 16, at the end of time, because of this Gog Magog war, this war of Armageddon, when these assembly, this gathering of troops take place at a certain location, which I will get to next time, God willing. I don't know what it's going to take to convince these people. All I can present you is the information that's in God's Word. And hopefully, light of God's Word will bring sight and they can see for themselves that their theories don't match up. These, this, this war, whatever you want to call it, Gog, Magog War, the Armageddon War, which are one and the same, is going to happen. And it's not going to happen a pre-tribulation period. It's going to happen at the end of days, one of the very last events, when the seven plagues and the seven vials of wrath are poured out because God's had enough. He's angry, and his wrath is coming with him. And he's going to deal with these nations his way, with his power. And the amazing thing is the people that are involved, the nations that are involved, and probably some looking on that are not involved, will still unfortunately not have a change of mind who God and who his son are. And they'll still support Allah. And they will bismillah all their way into the lake of fire. Because judgment is coming. And he is the one that can righteously judge all mankind, all nations, and he will. These two events are one and the same. Now, I will get to where this is going to take place. And this will aggravate more of the Christian science fiction theory that's out there. No, it's not going to be in the Valley of Megiddo or Megiddo Hill or Megiddo Mountain, whatever you want to call it. It's not even a mountain, which I already said before. It's going to take place somewhere else. And it's clearly shown where in the scriptures. And I. We'll get to that next time. But tonight, that's the only information I'm going to give you. I want to know. I don't want to give you too much. I want to know if you got that much at least. And you can see that Ezekiel 38 and 39 and Revelation 16 are referring back and forth to each other about the Gog, Magog War, the Armageddon War. If you got that much, then I want to hear from you now. Play the song.